Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our 12 p.m. prayer session. And it's Monday, and we are thankful that we are going to have an a interesting study. We have started a couple of weeks ago, and we've been looking at how the different names of God in the Bible, which, of course, is his character. And Sister Knox has been taking us through these studies and we're really grateful that God has spread our lives that we can share in this study. At this time, Sister Sarah is going to pray before we officially get started. Thank you, Sister Sarah. Let us pray. Kind and loving Father, the creator of heavens and earth and the seas and the fountains of waters, Lord, we thank you for another beautiful day that you have given us. Lord, we know it's your power and your wisdom that has made us to be here. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we can come and listen to your word. We pray this afternoon, Lord, that your Holy Spirit be in our midst, dear Lord. We pray that each and every person who's here, dear Lord, may we have that um, special feeling of the Holy Spirit so that we can listen and learn from your maid servant this afternoon. May you bless Sister Knox. May you speak through her, dear Lord. May you give her wisdom so that we can hear you speaking through her, dear Lord. And may you be with all those who are going to listen to the recordings as well, dear Lord. Bless them and be with each and every person here and the families represented. We need you throughout the day, dear Lord. Be with us and help us to live according to your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Sarah. And over to you, Sister Knox. Thank you, Sister Sharon. Good afternoon once more, brothers and sisters online, and those who will listen to this recording later. It's another blessed day that God has given us. It's a Monday once more. We continue with our series um, the magnificent names of God in our salvation. And as Sister Sharon has said, we've looked for uh, for the past um, three weeks, we have looked at some names of God, which are a revelation of his character, a character that we can trust, which are all, which is also full of promises in the names the promises that we can tap on and claim in times of need by faith. God's self-given names are a, a testimony and uh, they are an assurance to us that we can refer to this name as we come to him as a claim or as a reminder to God for who he says he is. And when we claim this by faith, we know that we serve a faithful God who lives up to his name, up to his promises, to them that call upon him in truth and in spirit. Today we're on part four. We're looking at uh, Yahweh, Yahweh Adonai or Jehovah Adonai. We have uh, the encounter, the first encounter of this name in Psalms 8 verse 1. And in our English version, that is equivalent to saying our master or our owner. Let us just get into the name and see what we glean out of this name, Adonai. The name that emerges with honor and significance, the title Adonai, translating as master or owner, <clears throat> is more than an identifier. It opens a dynamic and an inspiring relationship between the creator and his creation, 
Imagine a world where every sunrise and sunset, every mountain peak and ocean depth resonates with an echo of a majestic name. This is the world where the name Adonai is said quietly and yet loudly with the same strong feeling. Let us take a stroll through Psalms 8 verse 1. The psalmist ex exclaims with adoration, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Here the psalmist uses two distinct names of God. The first Lord in capitals stands for Yahweh or Jehovah in our English version. The sacred and unspoken name of God signifying his eternal and self-existence existence, uh, nature. The second Lord is Adonai reflecting our personal recognition of God's authority over us. The significance of Adonai can be likened to a relationship between a devoted servant and a benevolent master. In biblical times, a servant would look up to his master for protection and guidance, and the master in turn would rule over his servant with kindness and justice. When we call him Adonai, we acknowledge his ultimate authority as one who cares, provides, protects and the rule over us, guiding our path every day. As subjects or servants of God, the name Adonai reminds us of our place in the grand design. We are not aimless wanderers on the earth, but rather cherished creations under the loving rule of the master of the universe. In the book of Isaiah, we are reminded of his of this when the prophet says, But now, O Lord Adonai, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are the potter. We are the work of your hand. That's Isaiah 64, verse 8. Recognizing God as Adonai also carries a sense of comfort and security. Knowing that we belong to someone greater than ourselves who has the whole world in his hand. This sentiment is expressed in the book of Genesis when Abraham speaks to God as Adonai before daring to intercede for the city of Sodom in Genesis 18, verse 30. Calling him Adonai humbles us, yet also elevating us, as it is the name that binds us to the divine purpose and care. It teaches us that our every action and decision should be made in the light of his dominion with the aim to serve and glorify him as the rightful owner of all things. In essence, Adonai is not just a name, but a declaration of faith, a statement of our loyalty and a pledge of our love to one who in his, in his majesty claims both the highest heavens and our hearts as his dwelling place. More than the masters uh, we have here, Yahweh, Yahweh Adonai deserves our adoration and reverence. As a servant looks up to his master for all his needs after rendering his faithful service, we ought to look up to God as the only one who can provide all our needs and well-being, deserving our, of our faithfulness, dedication, and loyalty. Um, a psalm of praise, just to conclude on that name, a psalm of praise, that is Psalm 105. I'll read as quite a lengthy one. Verse is to 45. Um, Psalm 105 verses 1 to 45, I read, All give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds amongst the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, 
glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. Remember his works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye, seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same, the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it when they were from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another, to another people. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he, he, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, touch not thine, mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread he sent a man before them, even Joseph, <clears throat> who was sold for a servant, whose feet they had with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his, at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham, of Ham. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their en enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants he sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. He spake, and there came divers sorts of flies and lice in all their course. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also and their fig trees and broke the trees of their course. He spake, and the locusts came and caterpillars and that without number and did eat up all the herbs in their land and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light, in the night, the people asked, and, the, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy, and his chosen with gladness, and gave them the lands of the heathen, and they inherited the labor of the people, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you. I give back to you, Sister amen. Cheryl. Amen and amen. You know, when we realize that we have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb, and we do not 
own ourselves, that we have to um, give um, lordship and leadership and honour to God, then we then should be a different type of people because we have been bought with a price. And this is a reminder, you know, that God is sovereign and he is worthy to be praised and that his actions and plans for our, our lives are purposeful. Why? Because he loves us. Thank you so much, Sister Knox, for sharing this, this a vision of who God is when we see him. <laughs> In, as a name, when we read him and be, and his description of being Adonai. I don't know if anyone wants to comment. Just think that it's a very important message. Um, and um, if we really considered who we are in relation to God and who God is and his authority over us, I think we'd be more reverent in our worship. But today... I find in the Adventist church that reverence is almost lacking. It's a very important message. Thank you, sister. Amen. 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 You know, we, we show honour and respect to political leaders. We give um, attention to celebrities but the creator of who we are and, and the place that we exist, we, we, we take him as for granted. And I think that when our minds are transformed by his spirit, we will see him as we should. And this is why her revelation says we are blind. We are ignorant yeah. and yeah. we are naked because we really just don't get it yeah yeah and um and and the mercies that come from him you know because you know when you think i i know that as a parent i want i want my i want my title i want the respect that comes with being um a parent and I want my acknowledgement as a parent. Exactly. If my, children, if my children don't show that to me, I would, I, you know, they hear, they hear me. And yet our creator, have mercy on us, Lord. We do not give him the, the respect that is due his name. And of course, due his, his sovereignty. Mm. And we don't acknowledge that he's our sustainer. He didn't just create us. This is why we're living today, because he, he, he sustains us each and every day. And yet we, 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 we have no appreciation of it, hardly. Sad. That, that is true. You know, we, you know I, I have learned over the years that I stop arguing with God because <laughs> his will his will will be done as it is in heaven amen and amen. therefore you know i will say to him i'm not gonna do this i i don't have any intention of doing this father uh you better find somebody else to do it and then you know he talks with me and then i have to humble myself and i'm going like i don't like it but because I know your will is paramount, I will do. I will do it. Just change my Amen. mindset to change my mindset to it. I don't like it, but I will do it because I know your ways. I know your ways, and your ways are so much better than my ways. And yeah. I think that once we we get we surrender to His sovereignty, anything can happen to us. And we will, we will learn, we will have the spirit of praise and there will be no resentment or annoyance. But until we get to this, that, that, that transformation, we will always question, just like children will question the sovereignty and the responsibility and the leadership of anyone that is over them. Yeah. Sister Felicia. 
thank you. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sister Knox, for, for the powerful work you are talking about, about Adonai. Uh, what I have drawn from the lesson is that Adonai means that he is our master and he is our Lord. So the word master is a really very important word for, for us to understand as the as, as people who believe in God. Uh, many times as Christians, we like our God as our savior, as our redeemer, the one who saves us, the one who delivers us from, from trouble. But when the Bible is saying that he is our master, it means that he is a God who rules over us, the one who is controlling, who is in charge. So mm -hmm. as Christians, do we really want uh, God to be in charge of everything? Do you want him to be the one who is ruling over our minds, even our thoughts, that what we are thoughts, what, what we are thinking, the, why, the way we are eating, the way we are dressing, the way we are walking. If he is Jehovah Adonai, the Lord, our master, it means that he is the one who is in control of all of that. So may the Lord really help us that we allow God to be the master. And you know that when God is our master, we know that he is a good master. When he is the one who is in control of everything, he won't lead us astray. He will just be his servants. You know, when you're saying that this is master, you know that uh, we are his servants. We are uh, actually, we are, um, we are following after, we are paying uh, of science unto him. We are allowing him to, to be the one who rules over us, who gives us commandments, who is in charge, who, who instructs us and who is leading. So we are not doing things of our mm -hmm. own. But we are, we are just uh, being led by the master. We are just doing everything that is coming from the master as our servant, as, as, as the servants of the master. So may the, God really help us that we understand and we, we give God his place. We, we, we allow him to take this position of being the one who is ruling, who is mastering over, over all the affairs of our lives. Sometimes as Christians, you may say that, yes, the Lord can be the one who is ruling over my over my family but when it comes to finances we don't want the lord to be the master but god is the master he must be the master of everything of us so that we show that we are, we are totally dependent upon him in everything and when you know that when the lord is ruling on all the affairs of our lives we know that we are we are completely his and we are truly his uh, that's my contribution thank you so much Amen. amen amen thank you sis it, it is it, it it is it's having to say like lord i see that dress i would look cute in it but it it, it does not it does not represent you so it's like i'm not going to buy it it's it it's those little arguments because you know what vanity if vanity is allowed to um to be on the throne then god cannot be so it's it's all of those choices. It's the you know what do we eat, what do we drink, you know how we are entertained. We have to allow him to have the glory and the sovereignty in those choices. Thank you. Right at this time, can I have someone? If there's nothing left to say, this is that a historical? Did you want to add a little bit more? If not, we will go into a prayer session for the message and then, um, yeah, and then we'll go into our uh, intercessory prayers. So do we have anyone who will pray for the message? Yes, I will. Thank you, sis. Holy, gracious God, we come to you as our eternal Father, our Creator, <clears throat> our Redeemer, our Sustainer, the Giver of all good and perfect gifts. Father, we, we praise you for bringing this message to us today by dear Sister Knox. We thank you, dear Lord that in your love and your mercy, you bring messages to us uh, to feed our souls, to feed our hearts and our spirits, to lift our minds above the earthly things. 
And yet, Lord, as we look over our lives, we realize that we are sinners in need of a saviour. And we also realize that you are our Heavenly Father who lifts us up time and time again when we fall. How precious, how precious uh, that is. And so we, we want to humbly acknowledge, dear Lord, where we let you down and to ask that you will forgive us, that you will cleanse us and that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may live the lives of you as your true and faithful children, loyal to you above all. We ask that you would help us to remember this message today and help us, dear Father, that in remembering that we won't only just think and remember, but we will remember in our lives, in all that we do and in our approach to worship to you that we show you the reverence that is due. We show you and pay homage to you as a great creator God, as well as our dear Heavenly Father. And so help us, Lord, to be true to you, though the heavens fall. We're asking this for you to seal this message to our hearts and minds, because we ask it in and through the name of Jesus, our lovely Lord. Amen. Amen. You are muted, Sister Sharon. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Ingrid. I was saying. We all want to get to heaven, but do we realize that in getting to heaven, it requires us to be obedient on earth, and then eternity will be spent following the Lamb, which means that we cannot have our own way or unctions. It's got to be God's way 100%. And so this is why it says that we will be like angels, which is basically they are willing to do the bidding of God. And so this is why it has to be the same on earth as it is in heaven. So this is why we, we the surrendering has to happen now. So our silent prayer is going to be that we surrender all to the sovereignty of God. So from the moment that we wake up, that he is in control, to the moment that we place our heads on our pillows, as long as life is given and is sustained by his hand, that we will surrender all. So that will be our silent prayer then um do we have anyone that will do um the praise and thanksgiving because i will give um the prayer for um of confession to sister knox so do we have anyone to do praise and thanksgiving That is Hebrews 13, verse 15. Yeah, I can do it, Sister Shin. Okay, I will read that for you, Sister Knox. For, for the confession, I've got Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. You may change if you wish. Sister Felicia, are you able to do um, the prayer for the Holy Spirit, which is Romans 8, verse 16? Okay, I will get that done as well as the prayer for um, prayer retreat. So let's go into our silent prayer, asking God to give us a spirit of surrendering 
and that indeed he will be Yahweh Adonai in every aspect of our lives. Let us pray. Amen. And the scripture for praise and thanksgiving is Hebrews 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Amen. Amen. And thanks for the reading of the word. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we give you thanks this afternoon for you are worthy of our praises, dear Lord. Lord, we thank you for you are our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. Lord, we thank you for your kindness and your mercy. We thank you for all the love that you have given us, dear Lord. Lord, you spare not your only son, but you gave, you gave him to us that whosoever believes should not perish, but have everlasting life, have eternal life. Lord, we thank you for the plan of salvation. We thank you for all the good gifts that you give to us, dear Lord. It's only you, God, who loves us so much. It's only you who provide, who protect. Lord, you created us in your own image. You made us a little bit lower than the angels, but you are so mindful of us, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord. We give you all the praises and honor. This afternoon, Lord, we thank you for the food on our tables. We thank you for the clothes on our backs. We thank you for the family that you give, you have given us, dear Lord, the church family as well. Lord, we thank you for everything that you are doing. Without you, dear Lord, we are nothing. Without you, we cannot live because the enemy is there just as a roaring lion looking for those whom he may devour, dear Lord. You are the one who is protecting us. You are the one who is giving us all what we need, dear Lord. So we praise you, we thank you, and we worship you this afternoon. May your name be glorified. May you be exalted. May you be lifted up high, dear Lord. And may you, may your Holy Spirit help us, dear Lord, that every knee shall come and bow for you, dear Lord. Help us to live for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 <clears throat> for confession, I read Second uh, Chronicles 7, verse 14, and it reads, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let us pray. Can our God, our Father who is in heaven, blessed be your name and be exalted above all the names for it is a name that gives us hope. It is a name that gives us a promise. And as we come before you at this hour to confess our sins personally, 
to confess the sins of our families and to confess the sins of the body of Christ, the church. We come at the mercy of your son, Jesus, whom we have given for the remission of sins through his blood. We want to thank your father for such a promise as this that you have given in Second Chronicles 7. That if we, as your people, shall humble ourselves and call upon your name in truth and in spirit, in heaven you will hear our prayer and you will forgive our sins, heal our land, heal our diseases, physically as well as spiritually. This is the God that we talk about who heals and restores us. Our Jehovah Adonai, one who heals us and makes us. Our Jehovah Adonai, who is our master, who is in charge of us, the creator of heavens and the earth. For you are the potter and we are the clay. Help us, O oh Father, that we submit ourselves to your hand that you may make us whole. Forgive us where we have failed, where we have failed to submit to you as our master, where we have failed, O oh Father, to recognize you and the claim that you have on us because of the blood of Christ. And as we learn each day, we pray, create in us uh, new hearts that are made of flesh and remove that which is made of stone, that we may learn to surrender to you, for it is only in surrender that you can take charge of everything that concerns our lives. Put us straight in the path that leads us, us to salvation. And as we come this afternoon, I present myself, my family, present others also who are in this platform and their families and the body of Christ. Father, we have failed. Each and every one of us have gone astray like sheep, straight away from your laws, from your statutes. We are rebellious servants who do not honor your masterhood in our lives. Restore us and make us whole today and reconcile us to yourself as we plead the blood of Jesus to be appropriated on our behalf, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to restore us with yourself. We want to thank you. May the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be exalted above all the names, for it is his name that you have given him, O Father, through which we can be saved. We thank you this afternoon in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You are muted, Sister Sharon. Oh, you're so sorry. Sister Rosemary, can you do the prayer for prayer retreat, which is Romans 10, verse 15? Romans 10, verse 15. And I will do the prayer for the Holy Spirit. Thank you. So Romans 8, verse 16, and it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of of God. Let us pray. Sovereign God, we thank you that we are beginning to recognize you for who you are. Forgive us, dear Lord, where we have disrespected your name in our actions and in our and especially our lifestyle where we have called ourselves by your name and we have failed to represent you, causing others to stumble 
and to lose sight of the glory of God. We thank you, God, that you have gifted us the spirit of truth, creating us a heart, dear Father, so that we have a heart like Jesus, where the spirit can dwell permanently in our lives, that our actions will not be repugnant. Our actions will not cause him to leave, but we will have him dwelling, teaching, guiding, reproving us of sin and changing us in our daily walk by renewing our minds through the word of God. I pray, O oh God, that you will allow the fruit of the Spirit to be nurtured and displayed in our lives so that we will have the fruit of love, the love that comes from your throne room will flow from our hearts to our neighbours and that we will touch the lives around us because it is the love of God that makes us happy. Give us joy, dear Lord, joy deep and abundantly, so that we will not be shaken because you promised, dear Lord, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Be our strength. Be our strong tower. We pray, O oh God, for your the fruits of peace. Lord, give us a peaceable spirit that none of these things on this earth will move us from being on the rock, Jesus Christ. Make us the peacemakers in our homes and in our workplace and bring reconciliation to, uh, with others where there is conflict and that we will have the peace of God that will guide our, and protect our hearts and minds, just as, as Jesus displayed that he could be in a storm, he could be on the cross, he could be amongst the great multitude, and because he was filled with your spirit, he had peace. I pray for the spirit of kindness, that we will be kind-hearted and compassionate with one another. For the ones who are strong in the faith, for the ones who are just still on the milk, that we will not be judgmental, but we will guide them and teach them and be an example in our speech and in our conduct. Give us the spirit of goodness, O oh God, that we will have moral integrity in everything that we do and the righteousness of Christ will be imparted because of the indwellment of the Spirit of God. Give us the fruit of faithfulness, dear Lord. To be faithful is to trust in God and to have the faith of Jesus Christ that is what we hunger for, Lord, but we keep slipping because we are not faithful. Give us the spirit of gentleness to be meek and humble and to have a spirit that comes with that so that we are gentle and long-suffering with not only ourselves but with our brethren. And give us the spirit of self-control, O oh God, so we are not moved by whatever impulses come into our minds or whatever impulses that are displayed around the world, that we are not moved by the doctrines and, and the narratives of this world because we are being directed by the spirit of God. Lord, we submit your, ourselves so that your sovereign power will be over us. 
transforming us, emptying us of selfishness and pride and sinful actions. And that as we abide in the, the, the vine and we are in him, that the fruits will be demonstrated, seen from being changed from glory into glory because God abides in us. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the spirit of truth to guide us, to strengthen us, to cultivate those virtues on a daily basis in our lives so that the glory will go to you and there will be a benefit to all those around us because we walk with our master. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I'm reading in Romans chapter 8, verse 10. It reads, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Thank you for the reading of the word. Praying for prayer retreat ministries. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, how Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we come before you as we are, to humble ourselves for the sake of heaven. You are saying in Matthew 18, verse 20, if two or three are gathered for the sake of your name, you are in the midst. We understand that you are with us. You will never forsake us because of calling your name. You never forsake us because of reading the Bible. We, we will come as we are to you. Then you are the one who are going to change us. Our bodies are in spirit of righteousness. May you keep us as we are, that you are humbling ourselves for the righteousness, for that as the saints go marching home, we, we may we be in that number. All of us with our families, our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors and friends, our relatives, Lord, with all the sisters and brothers in this forum, Lord, I'm lifting those who are in the prayer retreat ministry. May you give them spirit of righteousness to stand in between them with you so they will lift up this work for you, not for the world, but for you. Thank you, Lord, you have done it early to call your soul and you chose him to be a good vessel of the gospel. You choose us to be the good vessels of gospel. You have chosen them, those who are standing in the scape of prayer retreat. Bless each and every one of them. And we, as we are here praying, bless us all. And those who did not have this opportunity, we say thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for being under the roof, food on our tables, shoes on our feet, the family you gave us, friends and neighbors and relatives. May Lord keep us awake until you come. Keep our names written in the book of life. So when we come, we'll say joy, joy. Here comes our Lord we have been waiting for. Keep us away from harm and danger. Lord, be with us for today and forevermore. Keep our hearts, our minds, our bodies ready for heavenly sake. Lord, we don't have more words to say. 
you understand us better than ourselves, that our beginning and our ending is in the palm of your hand. Bind us together now with the heavenly court of faith, love, peace, joy. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Sister Rosemary, for joining amen. us this afternoon and everyone else. Right, amen. I don't know if there are any um